What do you do when you've saved the last slice of cake, but there are other hungry eyes with thoughts of treachery? Anyone with siblings knows that you have to stake your claim quickly. Licking or taking a bite of the sugary delight is enough to deter most shifty sisters and betraying brothers. The common spotted Cuscus doesn't guard baked goods. Rather, he has to guard his territory. But that doesn't stop him from using this familiar strategy in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter at LD Taxonomy or visit us at our home on the web at LDTaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons, Tristan Taylor, Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, and Richard Kaspar you so much for your support it's greatly appreciated thanks for helping us keep the lights on and a very special announcement uh we have changed our patreon uh situation um so we're we're now uh recording our pre-show so previously whenever we would start a show we would talk for a little bit just to kind of get get the creative juices flowing and Usually we, we, work, we work from home, so we don't really talk to many people. Um, so just kind of getting the vocal cords going. And so we just we just chat about life and um, Marvel movies and uh, stuff like that. So if you want to hear that and hear the pre-show just before the, the regular show, um, you can subscribe to us on Patreon. Uh, we'd love to to let you into the... the the depths of our minds in the beginning of the show so um rather than just you know the um uh, and we're gonna i think release the 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 videos on youtube right yeah so the so the so that everyone can see them partly because um youtube is now like the number one way people consume podcasts uh baffle so it'd be nice to have uh people that more people that would want to consume this podcast on youtube maybe maybe we're like the, your podcasting app is the only re like if we're the only reason you have that podcasting app and you you listen to all of your other podcasts on youtube then let's meet you where you are you know yeah maybe you can enjoy us on youtube and see our faces and mm -hmm. the di my disheveled uh, deluxe studio recording studio, but yeah, that's just uh, it's a little bit of, a little bit of administrative details out of the way. Subscribe to us on Patreon if you want to hear us gab for thirty to forty five minutes about whatever whatever's on our minds. And today we're talking about an animal that stands for what they believe in, but more on that later. Yeah, I was not, I, I didn't, I didn't think that you were going to go with that. Um, and I don't know, there, there's, this is one of those ones that like is very striking to look at. It's an animal you've never heard of and is very strange looking, but uh, it does, it, it's, it's right down the middle um, of what it is, but there is something interesting about it. Yeah, so this is the common spotted. We talked about this in the pre-show. You said cuscus, which makes my skin hurt. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I've been thinking of this as couscous, which is a cousin of the quinoa, <laughs> the dreaded quin, <laughs> the dreaded. Quin I don't think it is quinoa. I don't know that. I don't know if they're cousins. I don't know if they share common, <laughs> common plant ancestors. Like, it looks the same and tastes relatively the same to me, at least. One of them is round. One of them is rice shaped. Never mind. So yeah, they're not they're not even related a little bit. No, they're both super. Except for that, they're both wheat. 
Yeah. All we yeah, just I just asked the robot, and the robot said, cuss, cuss. Yeah, that's that's not acceptable. I hate it. You can just go ahead and call it an Australian old possum. A, a couscous, or what was A couscous. That's okay. <laughs> He's a little couscous. <laughs> um, but uh, it's also known as the white couscous, which is... Um, uh, th- this is what one of its other names, not one of mine. It's also called the Aklang and the Gabby, which is what I'm going to be calling. <laughs> I'm just going to call it Gabby <laughs> going forward. <laughs> um, Gabrielle. Gabriella. Um, the cuss cuss. Uh, we're, but we're going to call it here the Fresh Cilantro and Lemon Juice Couscous and the Rorschach's Ruddy Tree Weasel. <laughs> Okay. More on that later, I guess. What would you call it? Were you a scientist? Um, I would call it Gabby, because <laughs> I would probably have to say this name a lot. And common spotted couscous just does not roll off the tongue. But Gabby, that that one's much easier to say. But anyway, it's in a kingdom you know, love, and are in. That kingdom is Animalia. The phylum is Chordata class, Mammalia. I know when I first saw this, I was like, what animal is this? I was, in, I was anticipating like some sort of lizard, but, um, nope. It's a mammal. A bird. Yeah. That's also, it's, it could be a bird. Um, the infra class is marsupialia. So marsupials are an infra class. I think I probably say this every time we do a marsupial, but it's always interesting to me that it's not an order. Um, but this is how taxonomy works. The order is Dipro, Diprotodontia. Diprotodontia. Mm-hmm. The fa- the family is Phalangeridae, which is possums. The genus is Spilocuscus. That's another thing. Is that like, if that's Latin, it's definitely couscous. Cuscus. You're concuscus. Um, Cuscus. <laughs> <laughs> Just inconsistency all around. Continuity <laughs> errors within a word. Um, <laughs> the species is uh, maculatus. So the nomen- binomial nomenclature is spilocuscus maculatus. Nice. That's something you say while you're stirring like a big cauldron. That's not like a that's not like a uh, a spell you just wave your wand for, um, mm-hmm. and it's not like the, your typical Roman gladiator binomial name. But it's like you just kept this big cauldron and you have like a broom and you're just like Spilocuscus Macalutus or whatever. I don't I can't even remember. It. Put a Maculatus c- cumin in there, or human. And then it like ah. <laughs> yeah it's uh this is when is this gonna come out probably a little after halloween but it's still as of recording uh we are about two weeks out of halloween so it's it's so, that it's the most wonderful time of the year this is coming out i think the day after halloween yeah so happy um belated halloween boxing day when you box up your pumpkins <laughs> you box up your horribly disfigured and moldy pumpkins put them in the attic yeah. um but since we're in the business of naming things it's time for my favorite part of the show critter groups the part of the show where i ask you a joe you joe i ask you a joe mm-hmm. are you a joe mm-hmm. um I ask you, Joe, a question, and that question is the same every time. What is the name of a group of this animal, or what is the term of venery, or what is the collective noun? It's all, it all means the same thing. If you saw a group of possums, because this is, this is in the possum family, Mm -hmm. uh, what would you call that group of possums? Would you say it's A, a passel of possums, B, a pocket of possums, C, a pillin of possums, or D, 
a pren of possums. Passel, pocket, pillin, or pren. What was the first one again? Passive? Passel. You're making up words. All words are made up. You definitely are waking up, making up words. Yeah, but you didn't make up all words. Yeah, but they're all made up. Someone I did. never said they weren't. I never once would have even said that they're not made who up. Who said that? Who, who, but, who, who, like, why can't I make up a word? You can. I didn't say you shouldn't. <laughs> I just accused you of it. <laughs> and you're right. Um... This is a real crapshoot. Guilty. I don't think it's charged. two. That's too good. Two? No. B. Oh. I don't think it's B. Let's go with C. Uh, it's C. Let's go with C. A pillin of possums? Sure. Eh. Incorrect. Oh, I wasn't was going to do that anymore because I don't have to. Um, yeah, incorrect. The answer is passel. It's a passel. It's one goodness, of those things it where it's like, it. if I if the other three answers were were like recognizable words, then you would you we would have a an odd man out. Um, right. So I had to make up <laughs> pillin and pren. Pren sounds like the name of like a Westeros character. Like it's close to like someone's actual name but it's just it's not quite there it, uh, it sounds like the name that never was the common everyday name that was never conceived yeah like but, uh, yeah, if, the, if i if my last the... name were prendergast i would hope everyone would call me pren <laughs> yeah like... the, it, that was certainly a game of choose your favorite combination of syllables yep there was no other criteria for me to choose and this was another thing where like to come up with pren i typed p and then kind of just like looked for a consonant <laughs> <laughs> and then i was like r okay what's, what's r pra pro pre pre <laughs> this is me like, playing words with friends this just is trying to test out words <laughs> that seem like they could be words Words with friends. Man, I haven't yeah. thought about that game in a long time. I just started playing it recently. It, that was really that's really good. I mean, it's just Scrabble, but it's Yeah. Uh Well there's a, a there's Words with Friends too, where there's a ton of stuff that they shove in your face at all times. But there's also this n new feature that like it tells you uh if you there like it tells you like how many points you're making. Uh, compared to the maximum number of points you could make, oh, so, so you know that it's you're like cheating, <laughs> but it's but both of you can do it. Both of you and your opponent can do it. Interesting. Like, oh, this is only half the points I could make. I would assume that Words with Friends too is just like you play Words with Friends, but when it's not your turn, you have to like clear lines of Candy Crush or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> this is like nonstop yeah. action, <laughs> action-packed Scrabble. <laughs> no, you make it action-packed by playing like fourteen people at the same time. It's not yeah. like chess. I don't have to keep track of the moves. Yeah, I, I miss that game. That was that, that was a fun thing to play on my like iPhone three or whatever. <laughs> well, get it. Get Words with Friends too. Experience the horrible UI of a twenty. 22 Zynga game. Z Z Zynga. That's, isn't that something that yeah, they say in they're the, that, uh, Big Bang Theory? It's the company that, that, <laughs> that made um, Farmville and all of those like early Facebook games. Wow. Uh, you made me want to play it a lot less. <clears throat> Still you want to hear a description guys. of this couscous boy? Yeah. I Although I prefer to call it Cuscus. <laughs> Cuz cues. Um, I did call it Rorschach's ruddy tree weasel, so here's why. <laughs> um, so Gabby is a lanky, lemur-looking fellow with a short, fuzzy coat, a mousy face, and a long, curly, prehensile tail. The tail is actually mm. covered in scales. Scale tails. Tail scales. Um, really? They line the underside 
the the top part is got like um is covered in fur but the underside has these rough scales that allow it to that help it grip branches when it curls it around branches that might have been the major fact that i was thinking of when i originally wrote this down a scaled mammal mammal yeah yeah maybe it's just like shingles on the tail <laughs> they got shingles it's very uh convenient but also very uncomfortable um it's Fur color ranges based on its age, sex, and it's where it lives. So it's most striking. A ASL. Uh, American Sign Language. <laughs> ASL, an article of internet slang used in instant messaging programs and internet chat rooms. It is used as a question to find out age, sex, and general location of a person one is talking to. Yeah, I guess that's one way to catch a predator. Um, the <laughs> anyway, the most striking variants of the um, the couscous are white with large orange splotches, like it's a color me mine version of Rorschach's ink blot test or Rorschach's mask from uh, Watchmen. It's a doodle bear. Yeah. You know they have you can buy Rorschach's mask. Um and it has really? this like it has the it has the the ink on the front. Um so f for those of you who don't know, he's this uh an anti superhero. It's where he wears a basically a sock over his face, but it's got ink blotches that move around and disappear and and so he's called Rorschach. Oh, you can buy but, one that moves yeah so you buy it it has these ink blots but they they fade away with heat so when you breathe into the into the the sock that you're wearing over your head it makes it part parts of it fade away um hmm. and so it looks like it's it's undulating and moving around in the magical fashion that it does in the in the movie so uh, that's one of those things where it's like if i had to pick a a Halloween costume for the rest of my life like that that's a pretty good one like easy not that expensive and cool looking uh, here's Carlos he's Rorschach again yeah he's Rorschach <laughs> every stinking year <laughs> who's Rorschach he's a and then I have to be like it's it. he's this guy from Watchmen <laughs> don't watch it it's it's not a it's it's not a wholesome movie <laughs> just tell people that. <laughs> I'm, I'm a character from a movie that I can't recommend. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Um, the other variants of uh, the couscous can be brown, reddish, light gray. Um, again, it varies. Uh, it has general weasel-ish body uh, and head shape. Although its ears don't stick out, they're actually hidden under its fur. Um, so it looks like its, its ears are plastered back. Um, and it has opposable thumbs on its back feet to help it grasp trees. Um, but the question, the burning question, is, is it as big as a weasel? Well, welcome to the Beloved Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show. The part of the show when we present the animal signs and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show when, that's introduced by you when you send an audio of yourself saying, singing, or chittering. The words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have a new measure up intro this week, which means we have to go back into the archives and find one of our greatest hits. And Carlos doesn't get 5% towards his nursing school victory of at least a B in the game measure up yep it's past it's a pass fail course i've been spoiled by the fact that we had measure up new measure up intros for a while i forgot to pull one up without further ado the listener's favorite part of the show Were you? Were, was this one of the ones you were there to get? Yes, that was my um, my sister in law, Vicky, and that's the 
there, we were just at a a family get together, and she calls her her little pug Mama's Angel. She's a little oh, pug yeah. named Albus that she calls Mama's Angel. Um, but like it's been so twisted and deformed by the dark side of cute voice that it turns into <laughs> Bubba <Thitha. laughs> So it's like yeah. Mama said so. Yeah, it did sound like a mid-stroke. She pulled out one last time of saying real syllables and said measure up. (laughs) Yep, so we were just making fun of that, and then the time came for me to to, to solicit measure ups from everyone I know and love. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, it's reached the point of the evening when I must ask you once I come to you once again asking for... No, they're measure like ups. whenever there's a family get together, I like kind of pull out my uh my like MLM presentation. <laughs> like <laughs> oh, you like you, you guys thought you were coming to a dinner party. Well actually I'm here selling cookware um <laughs> and, and makeup on the other side over here. Um and also can I have a measure up from everybody? It's uh it'll really help me start my business <laughs> from the ground up. <laughs> anyway. I was part of an MLM, okay? You guys, I, I, I can say these things. Which MLM? Cutco, Vector, or whatever. Oh, is that an MLM? Yes. Very much hmm. so. Like, quintessentially. Well, thank you, Vicky, and thank you to Mama Said So, uh, Mama's <laughs> Angel. <laughs> For that measure of intro. Let's get right into body length. This is the length of their body without the tail. Uh, 35 to 65 centimeters or 14 to 26 inches. How many Q scusses go into the in-game height of the throat of the world, Skyrim's tallest mountain? <laughs> so what video games do you play in these days? <laughs> Um, words with friends. Words with friends, I imagine. Um, here's a here's a hint. The throat of the world is home to the Greybeards, practitioners of the voice. The mountain is a horrible place to visit in survival mode because it takes a really long time to reach the top, and it's so cold. I thought that mountain was called High Hrothgar, but that must just be the temple at the top of it, huh? That's the temple at the top. The in-game height was determined by measuring the amount of units it is in Skyrim's creation kit. Interesting. I never thought I'd be as appalled to hear the term Cuscus and Throat of the World in the same sentence. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't like it. Um, I don't know. It's tall, it's tall, tall mountain. It is. It's tall video game mountain. Goodness gracious, we're not even learning anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is useless. We're information. learning something. It's just it's not good inform. It's useless information. Um, it's novel. I don't know. Um, I mean, you walk up it. I mean, it takes a long time to get up there in video game time. But considering it takes days to get up tall mountains in real life, um, it can't be that bad. It's like it's a, you you can walk from the bottom to the top in like probably less than ten minutes mm-hmm. in Skyrim. Mm-hmm. Until you just get at, just get clapped by that troll. <laughs> yes. Um, clapped all the way back down to the to the right white run. Um, One thousand meters, ha? Ah. Yards, three thousand feet. This is how high I think this mountain is. Divided by 26 inches. No. 
times 12 to find out how many inches there are and then divide that by 26 inches 1384.6153846156 just you know give or take it was just kind of all the cost I did, final I didn't, answer I, I didn't use a calculator i swear yes off the cuss <clears throat> off the <laughs> off the cuss oh my gosh <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to yoke anybody's yak but that's this is like a this is an unpleasant unpleasant word and this is an unpleasant word and last week we did the sperm whale so <laughs> <laughs> final answer <laughs> yeah the correct answer is 949 Q scuzzes. That is that is not a nursing school victory. I know it. I know it in my heart of hearts. The mountain. The mountain is 627 meters or 2057 feet. High. Yeah, that's an, that's an itty bitty mountain. Small building. Or not small. It's uh, a big building. It's a, it's a big Tall building. building. It's a big building yeah. small mountain. Yeah. It don't it it it's treated like an Everest almost in game, but it, it in reality they couldn't put an Everest size mountain as a main mission because it would take you way too long to go up there or around it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unless you had uh, flight. Or so <clears throat> wait, let's talk that. 1.5 to 6 kilograms or 3.3 to 13.2 pounds. How many couscouses go into the largest bowl of couscous? <laughs> Here's a hint. Uh, couscous, 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 couscous is small, I wrote. <laughs> Couscous is small steamed durum wheat clumps, which is essentially a tiny pasta in a long rice shape. The largest bowl was made in Algeria in 2004. Remember the episode where they discusses couscouses? In Friends? The, the, the episode <laughs> where they discusses couscouses. Yeah, that's what this episode would be called if we stole from Friends' naming conventions. Yeah, and all of our episodes, all of our LDT episodes would be called the one with the spotted couscous in it. <laughs> the one, the <laughs> the one with the pistol shrimp. Basically, names itself. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. And the bowl. Last time we did a big bowl of something, the bowl was like, like a, a an above ground pool. <laughs> I have no idea what the weight of the bowl is or if it even is factored in. I think it was spaghetti. It was like the biggest yeah. bowl of spaghetti and it was actually like, yeah, a, a full-on above-ground pool full of spaghetti. Spaghetti um, about it. <sighs> um, a thousand pounds. A thousand is the, is the one, is the, just the number I'm going for. So it's half a ton. Um, divided by 13.2. 75. 75. 75 Yes. Final answer? Yes. The correct answer is 1,009 Cuscuses. Oh, so you close. You went with the arbitrary 1,000. You should have just gone for the whole shebang by choosing arbitrary 1,000. The that bowl was 6.04 tones or 13,000 315 pounds. So many Q's Q's. I wonder if they won a Tone for it. No. Tone Montana. Unless they put it on Broadway. Um, that's all I got for that. Do you have any swift facts before we get into the major fact? Oh, these facts are going to be so swift and rapid. Um, the, it lives mostly in Papua New, Papua New Guinea, Papua mm -hmm. New Guinea, um, and a few islands from Indonesia and the tippy top of Australia in a region called Cape York. Uh, it prefers rainforests, mangroves, and eucalyptus forests all at low altitudes because it mm -hmm. loves to live in densely forested 
lowlands because it is mm. a, it, it's an arboreal mammal. Um, thanks to its unspecified dentition, which I was like, what does that mean? And then I thought about it for a second. I was like, oh, oh, I guess it means nonspecific teeth. <laughs> well, a lot of <laughs> a lot of animals have like teeth that are specifically meant to do a particular thing, like eat plants or rend flesh. Um, that's not the case for the. And it has like a different tooth every set. Like every every tooth is a different tooth. Yeah, one tooth is like specific tooth. They're all like Lucky Charm shaped. Like one's a cross and one's like a one's a <laughs> one's a, a, a balloon. Horseshoe um, and a balloon. <laughs> um, it's yeah. So it has it, it has teeth that are not specialized for any one particular thing, but that also means that it can eat a wide variety of things, at least plant things. Um, it likes leaves from all kinds of plants nectar eats flowers it also sometimes eats small animals and eggs so it's it's omnivorous in a technical sense but it's most of its diet is made up of of leaves and flowers and stuff um so it is reclusive so it's nocturnal and it's solitary um although sometimes it does eat during the day which is uncommon for members of its genus, um, other other couscouses. Um, so it's but uh, it's difficult to find and observe. It lives high in the treetops. It mostly comes out at night. It's usually just by itself, um, and it's shy. It doesn't like to be seen. Um, it does need to keep a lookout for pythons and predatory birds that live in the area, owls and hawks and things like that. Um, uh, which is like, oh, it's, it's a good thing you don't live in the Amazon because there are more predatory birds and more snakes and jaguars uh, to to keep an eye out for. Um, and they overall, they live about 11 years in the wild. Um, I would not say that this is overall the cutest animal, but it's definitely pretty cute. And a lot of people have... Um, this has been kept as a pet, um, but also it has been hunted quite extensively for its unique mottled Rorschach coat. And that's all I got. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm ready for, I'm, I'm, I am ready. My brain is ready for one of your major facts, please. It's not the thickest fact. But it is a quite a viscous fact. Mm. Um, <laughs> That's my favorite kind uh, of it, fact. It's like when you're making a smoothie and you're it's a two fruit smoothie and one of the fruit is frozen, but the other one is fresh. Everyone That's... knows a two fruit smoothie where two fruit are frozen is the thickest smoothie. Everyone knows that? It's news to me. Yeah, especially if you uh, use a thick, creamy base. But we, we're not doing that. It's a thinner, thinner on this. It's the thinner side of thickness. This fact, um, the commons, but I'm calling this major fact, a claim staked. A claim stuck. How do you say a claim. that doesn't seem right. And the spelling seems wrong. Stake. S-T-A-K-E-D. Stake your claim. That's a mini game in mm -hmm. Mario Party. But yeah, staked, the, I think. Like, cause you stake yeah. some, like a, if you got to. Dracula was staked through the heart. He wasn't stuck. Yeah. Or stoked. Or stuck. Maybe stuck. Bram staker uh, <laughs> Dracula. Bram Staker. <laughs> he's, just, <laughs> he's got like super high cholesterol. He's Bram, he's Bram Staker. <laughs> Bra uh, Bram. He's Bram Staker. And then he's offsetting it with a lot of fiber. <laughs> so he's just having steak sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. Steak in between two two just big slices of of wheat bread. Bram Bram is another like like Pren, like the the name that like yeah. really never ended up being a name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The common spotted couscous, cus cus is a solitary man. For most of the year they feed and nest all by themselves. But male couscouses can be extremely territorial. Even though 
Even though they look like a cross between a teddy bear and a sloth, they can get pretty aggressive. There's even a, a silky cuss cuss. That's what it's called. And it like has very silky fur, which seems fun to uh, handle. It's silky. Less than- what is it? <laughs> it's a couscous. Um, male relationships are often controversial. And, and by that, I mean confront, confrontational. Uh, if they happen on... <laughs> like, where is this on, going? If they happen uh, on Twitter? to cross paths. But if you're a lone fuzz monkey trying to live in a, uh, a peaceful life in the forest, what can you do to avoid encroaching invaders? Punch well, him. the answer to that question is to stake your claim so that everyone knows who this territory belongs to. Male cuscusses mark their territory with their scent uh, in several ways. They emit a body odor that is quite powerful. Though uh, one video, which you can click a link to on ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. I mean, ldtaxonomy.com on the page for this episode. Uh, a video featured a man holding a cuscus saying he's got a very, very strong, but not actually unpleasant smell. What could that mean? <laughs> the smell of like, I would say the smell of like a wet, like a, like a, bo- a wet cardboard box. Strong, but not necessarily unpleasant. Oh, or like a wet dog. That's not yeah, like it's automatically unpleasant, like, oh, I'm going to throw up. It's just like, wow, that is a very strong smell of a wet dog. <laughs> oh, or like when you have a, when you share a office space with other people in Florida and they walk across a parking lot to go to like Walmart and come back. The just the distinct outside smell on them. I feel personally attacked by that since you and I worked, uh, in an office space next to each other for years it was and i have no particular and every lunch i would go and walk around the yes. parking lot just to i just was to talking about sanity. that office space <laughs> it was talking about that office office space but it wasn't um a particular problem for a particular person anyone any combination of people that went out and came in smelled like outside or yeah. smelled like human beings that have walked across a hot parking lot it's sweat yeah uh, they, in addition to just their general musk, they also spray excretions from their scent glands to mark their, uh, to make sure their musk really seeps into all the cracks and crevices of their favorite tree. But anyone with siblings knows there's one sure way to claim a cookie. And do you know what it is? To give it to a mouse? No. You lick it. Oh. Yeah. You ever do that? Like, no. you want the last cookie, so you quickly grab it and lick it so that it would be distasteful to all others. Well, the only person, that's like a sibling thing to do, and my sister would not care in the slightest if I licked a, a cookie. She's if she still, wants a cookie, she'll have a cookie. If she ha- if she wants a cookie, lick, lick or no lick, it's she's going to have that cookie. So, <laughs> it, Well, that's, a, that's just the power of... Um, Personal just determination. Lot, like personal determination. Yeah. And just being like, you know what? I probably won't get sick and I will have cookie. And that's and good. Abandoning that's the net stakes. positive. <laughs> you have <laughs> you have your maximum your minimum allowable offer is I'm getting this cookie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so I have no uh, I, where's my cookie. black swan in this in this negotiation? She's <laughs> 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 just nothing to lose. <laughs> The black swan is like that she would eat any cookie. So if you could give her another cookie or maybe the black swan is that she is just generally hungry. And if you could provide something else that is not your soft Publix frosted cookie, then you can get away with your cookie. soft public. Fr- no, she can have that cookie. I get those cookies for people because I know they like them, but I'm not that tempted by them. Those what about co- a regular chocolate chip? That one from Publix. Yes. Publix's yeah. chocolate chip and their and their sprinkle like soft sugar cookies. Those are my kryptonite. Mm-hmm. But those the frosted ones that like just crumble apart. 
not I mean they're not they're not disgusting by, by any stretch of the imagination but I'm not very tempted by them they're not as good they are the quintessential example of something that is delicious that you will eat if it is there but you don't need to and you wouldn't be missing out if you didn't it's the kind of stuff you you avoid uh, during the holidays because you know you're going to be eating a lot of other stuff that's actually like quite good yeah it's like I would much rather have a, like a cinnamon roll the the cinnamon roll that's coming like tomorrow morning then eat this it's not worth the calories to me right it's not worth the calories it's if, worth an- the, if you were like skinny as a rail and never never gained weight why not it's fun true okay let's talk about this animal <laughs> the spotted <laughs> couscous likes to lick the branches and leaves of their tree to let everyone know who is the king of tree keeper of the leaves it's george of the jungle <laughs> That's a Cat Stevens song. Uh, sometimes huh. males mosey past the scent warnings and confront their rivals. If so, they will quite literally post up. Are you familiar with that phrase? Is it post a up? football term? No. Oh. Well, it might be. But it, it means to just like, you know how like people do like, um, they like square up for yeah. a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of similar. Um, The couscous males will stand straight up on their back legs and make barking and snarling noises. If this display of standing up to their enemies doesn't work, they can scratch, bite, and kung fu kick uh, rivals and predators. I want to see one of these things kung fu kick something (laughs) more than I have wanted to see anything. (laughs) I, uh... What? I didn't I there I saw another video. <laughs> I didn't link it, but it's like a man uh who seems sure of himself holding a cuscus is handing a cuscus to a woman white as the driven snow. <laughs> so she what? seems like maybe a tourist. Is that uh, a Shutterstock stock photo description? <laughs> And uh, you hear her ask, "Does it bite?" And he's holding it like a baby. <laughs> he's holding it like a baby. And she asks, "Does it bite?" And it is doing <laughs> exactly what you would expect a small, tiny man to be doing if you were like it was being manhandled by like aliens, just like kicking and opening its mouth and trying to bite and like trying to grab and kick and squirm and she's like does it bite and it is it is fighting for its life it's screaming (laughs) gnashing and gnashing its teeth trying to get it's weeping it's weeping and gnashing its teeth (laughs) (laughs) this man holding it like a baby he would hand you this sobbing monkey (laughs) (laughs) it doesn't bite i swear fighting for its life (laughs) <laughs> I do. I really want to see it. Kung Fu kick, though. I can't. I typed in couscous kick, and everyone's just giving me couscous rep- recipes with like spicy couscous <laughs> with red pepper flakes in it. But <laughs> um, I will find a video of it kicking. It has to be there. The internet is vast. <laughs> But that's all I got for that. So this man goes around licking his entire domain so that everyone will know. That is a lot is his. That's a that's a lot more mild mannered than what most mammals do to mark their territory. Except for it does that too. So that makes it kind of even worse. Oh that yeah, that's worse. You can't do both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to pick one. But also, it just smells like a wet cardboard box. Um, so it's a power. It just just by being where it is, I mean, does its territory? Does it? Sm- I mean, does is no, that the no, description? No. It, I didn't get a description in oh. specific terms. Just that it was strong, but not necessarily unpleasant. It's not like a skunk, but it is, is it, a powerful, potent smell. To me, that's um, anything uh, cinnamon. Yeah, uh, I don't love it, but 
I like it's the smell. Of cinnamon. Very strong and not necessarily unpleasant. No, nah, everyone likes that. But I would I would prefer other other scents than cinnamon. Leave in the comments of wherever you're listening to this, or on uh, I guess Facebook. Where, like, what, or email, what is your example of a strong but not necessarily unpleasant smell? Oh, I would love to hear this. Because I know that I can, that, like, there's there's a really good example floating around somewhere in the back of my mind, but I just can't think of it right now. And I don't think I've been, I, I don't think I've done it justice by mentioning cinnamon and wet dog. Things that people, <laughs> people, some thing, one thing that people, univer, people universally like, it is in candles. People make their house smell like this. And something that nobody likes. Something that people generally don't like. And in fact, was one of the odorants in Monsters, Inc. I still think wet paper is a good example. Although maybe that's not strong. Just have you distinct. ever smelled a paper mill though that is disgusting oh maybe that's a bad, it is, it is bad. smell um sweat is also it's not i could it's stuff that could be unpleasant i don't know home depot the smell of home depot oh i like the smell of home depot it smells like so fresh I. cut lumber it smells like lumber, but it also smells like chemicals. Johanna said cinnamon. I just texted her. <laughs> yeah, good. Two points for cinnamon. <laughs> although, although she might be, I asked the question, what is a strong but not necessarily unpleasant smell? That's so. I guess all pleasant smells fall into that category. Yeah, so what that's is a true. strong but not pleasant or unpleasant smell yeah has to be both because then i would say pancakes is a strong but not unpleasant smell (laughs) (laughs) she just she says it can be overpowering at times yeah i i agree with that i'm not the biggest fan of the overpowering smell of cinnamon interesting but i (laughs) think i think we've talked about the couscous enough uh real gasoline po- what gasoline markers no gasoline is is definitely unpleasant markers that's some people better. smell love the smell of gasoline yeah they're addicted to it <laughs> they're my strange addicted to it <laughs> yeah that's a they've they've smelled it too much and the more they smell it the worse it gets or like back in the day when you would um, turn on the like, the, I don't I don't know if they still have this kind of like if they've replaced the the, the cooling agent in the cars these days. But you used to turn on your car and like something would come out of the air vents, like some smell, and I couldn't put, put my finger on it. But it was like this smells like weirdly intoxicating, but also it smells like not good. I don't know. I haven't smelled it in a long time. It's been a while since I've smelled anything. That's, that's not true. Uh, free out there in Podcastia. That was the common spotted couscous. Gabby herself. Go eat your leafy greens. Take a hold of your arboreal raft. And stand up for what you believe in. Like the couscous here in life, death, and taxonomy. Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. podcast (laughs) johanna just said that her nana used to chase buses because she liked the scent of gasoline 
Her nanny? <laughs> Nana. Her grandma. Oh. That's not better. <laughs> <laughs> well, she says she was she was pregnant at the time. <laughs> oh, this, this story keeps getting worse with every new piece of information. <laughs> but do you know how pregnancy makes you like some... You know how pregnancy makes you... <laughs> Uh, makes you, you know like how pregnancy gas. makes you huff gasoline and chase buses 